Well, a little bit earlier this year, uh, you saw me completely transform uh, one corner, one side of our basement, and the transformation was phenomenal. It looks awesome, and I can link to that video down below. But there's been another corner of the basement that I've just been trying to ignore, um, and I don't wanna throw any members of my household under the bus because they work very hard, but many of you can probably relate you might end up with sections in your basement, garage, attic, storage spaces um, that you just don't know what to do with. You wanna make it look nicer, they're too busy to help. So today let's talk about how you can actually declutter and organize someone else's stuff. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Tom, who is a wonderful handyman. And so he always is working on projects, he's remodeled our house, and I really appreciate that but then we can have the aftermath, <laughs> right? And so if someone in your family has an area like this, um, it can be tough, especially if we've gotten the other areas of our house decluttered and organized, and we just really want to get this area done too. And so today let's talk through some ways that we can help other members of our family declutter, organize, even if they're not able to help right now. I do think there are some things that we can do if they're willing. If they say, don't touch my stuff, stay away from it, I generally recommend respecting that, <laughs> right? But if I ask, hey, could I help you get this area organized? I think there's some ways that we can go about it. So uh, step one, I think it's important to have uh, some tools that are gonna make this job a whole lot easier. So you know me, I have bins. <laughs> I have chalk markers and these clip-on chalk labels that I really like a lot. I have a black trash bag, black is key. Uh, a donation box is super handy. I don't know that we're gonna come across any donations here, but as soon as I say that, then we will. <laughs> and then I also have some post-it notes for temporary labeling. Uh, we're gonna talk about grouping like with like and, and the categories we're gonna use for these, but I don't necessarily know right on the onset here because it's not my stuff, uh, what all the categories are gonna be. So. Post-it notes can be really nice for temporary categories. All right, well, why don't we just get started and then we can talk through what it is that we're doing. Okay, I'm also gonna time this whole process to see how long it takes because in my head, I have built it up to be like a 12 hour ordeal with a, just 12 hours of pain and agony, right? I don't think, now that I'm looking at it again, I don't think it's gonna take that long. <laughs> so uh, step number one, I am labeling the bins that I know that I'm going to need so that I have a spot to sort into. So I already know there's some categories here like painting supplies and caulk and um, light bulbs that there's a good amount of stuff there that I can put into. So that feels good. And then um, I'm gonna start sorting into those and just looking for obvious trash. Uh, another thing to mention is, as far as our organizing styles, I'm a ladybug, which means I like big, broad categories and out of sight. Tom's a cricket. He likes stuff out of sight, but he likes much more detailed categories. And so that's not me. So I'm just using my organizing style right now. Cass will say, Cass from Clutter Rug will say, like default to the, the broader category if there's multiple people that are working together on it. So I'm gonna go big, broad categories right now. And then from there, if Tom wants to break it down into smaller categories, he is more than welcome to. <laughs> So don't get me wrong, even when I look at a space like this, it feels very intimidating and overwhelming. It's like, oh, where do I start? Um, I'm not gonna know what to do with any of this stuff. And so that's where creating a few categories that we know and then sorting like with like is the easiest place to start because what I'm telling myself is I'm not making any hard decisions right now. If I come across something, I'm like, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm just setting it aside. I'm trying to get the bulk of the stuff into these categories that I already have here and just throwing away the trash and relocating stuff that I know has a home elsewhere. And so as I was going then, I did also decide um, to make a category for wiring. I'm like, oh, I think we're gonna come across a lot of wiring stuff. So I just put it on a post-it note and then I also have a temporary category for tools because Tom doesn't keep his tools down here. They should be up in the garage. Um, but you know how it goes, like tools will wind up down here. So I might not leave that as a permanent category, but it just feels nice to have a spot to put that kind of stuff right now. And so again, I just use post-it notes so it's very temporary and easy to change if I want to. Okay, I wanna give a six minute update <laughs> because I can't believe how much better this feels in six minutes. So again, here are my bins and you can see like the painting one, 
um, and the light bulb one is starting to get filled up a little bit. The other ones are pretty empty still, um, but I was able just even to get rid of a lot of garbage and a chair that was in there. I don't know, maybe it's not coming across. In person here, it feels so much better and it feels like I've made a lot of progress in just like six minutes, like I said. And so I'm feeling very energized and motivated to keep going right now because I can actually see progress and I feel like I'm making a difference. And I feel like when Tom walks down and sees this, he's gonna be like, oh wow, that looks awesome. He will ask me, don't get me wrong. He will ask if I threw anything away or got rid of anything. And I'll very honestly be able to tell him, no, I didn't. I, I only got rid of trash. Otherwise, I just put stuff into categories. Doesn't it look so much better? All right, why don't we keep going? Okay, so let's just talk through some of the stuff I'm finding. I think it's all the same stuff you're finding in your spaces too, right? Um, uh, it turns out this black bin has like a bunch of extension cords in it. Um, I feel like Tom would want those. So, and they'll probably go out to the garage. So I'm setting that aside to ask him about. I, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna keep, I don't, again, I don't want things to hang me up or to stall out my progress. And those types of things in the past would have been like, oh, well, see, I don't know what to do with this stuff. So I can't possibly tackle an area like this. And I'm like, no, nope, I'll just set it aside. I'll ask him what he wants to do if he wants to, for us to create a space down here to keep them, or if it's something he wants to like, roll up and hang up in the garage. Um, I'm also coming across things like all these like user manuals, these random baggies with like a few little parts left in it. So that that's all gonna go and it feels so good <laughs> to get rid of this kind of stuff. But for me, I am just tossing it. So you do what's best for you in your situation. Here's the thing, we're not good, like we don't keep um, owner's manuals, like here's one for our water softener because we've found, like Tom had to, you know, place the, replace the element in our water heater a little while back. We didn't consult the manual. He went online and found a YouTube video of how to change it, right? So for us, the season we're in, there's nowhere where I could put this where he would know to look for it and then that's how he would get the information. And so all of this stuff, even this, like this little random baggie with stuff was buried in a bin. There is no way he remembered that was there. Now, if he did, and I, or I wasn't sure, I could create a spot for this kind of stuff. Like I was like, well, I could have a miscellaneous bin or a random parts bin or something. And so there, there are solutions. So if you're like, oh, I couldn't possibly throw that away. That's totally fine create a bin for it. Like it, it still has to have a home, right? It just can't float around like this. This is stressful when it's the bins of random stuff, right? And then there's also just like some packaging stuff that I could tell had gotten wet. Again, our basement gets wet. Um, and so that was just very clearly trash that I was throwing away. So actually so far it, it's been going really well. Where we're at now, another like 10 minutes in, I can see floor. Um, I can start working on the shelves now. Like this is actually going way better <laughs> than I thought that it was gonna. So I actually am feeling very encouraged right now. And so again, I know how we build these things up in our head to be so scary and so intimidating, but I think, I think if, if we've been hanging out for any amount of time, I think you're looking at stuff differently. I think you've been building up your decluttering muscles. Certainly if you're getting to a point to tackle something like this, you've built up your decluttering muscles. And so something that might've even a year ago completely you know, stumped you, thrown you off or whatever, you have a different skill set now than you did in the past. And so I really feel confident for you too, that you can tackle areas like this and we have a system and a plan and it doesn't have to be so scary and intimidating. Okay. Well, um, why don't we get, uh, go closer to the shelf and I'll, well, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> see now something, now something's totally going to throw me out there. Right. But I don't think so. All right. Why don't we keep going? Did you know today's video is sponsored by all form. We've had our All Farm sofa for almost a year. All Farm is a sister brand to Helix. The mattresses we all love. All Farm are modular sofas and chairs that are American made and easy to assemble. And what's so cool about All Farm is that you can personalize your sofa to your space and your style by creating over 500 unique combinations with seat numbers, corners, chases, and ottomans. Plus, they're scratch and stain resistant. You pick the style, you pick the color, you pick the material. Based on our space, we chose a three seat sofa in teal with a chase end. Plus, shipping is fast and free in the US. And it gets delivered right to your door in manageable size boxes. Did you know you can put your all form sofa together in as little as 15 minutes? It actually helped daddy to put it together. But don't worry. It's still really sturdy. Do you want to know how we use our all form sofa? We sit, we play, crocheting, we watch movies, we wrestle, napping, we read, we build forts, we jump, don't tell mom. 
You practically live on it. If it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, All Farm has a 100 day trial. So you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. If you don't, they'll pick it up and you'll get a full refund. Visit the link below or go to allform.com backslash minimal mom for 20% off of any sofa you want. I mean, your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for, for sponsoring today. Aren't they great helpers? Well, it is hard to believe that we've had our all form sofa for almost a year now. Like they said, we live on it. They're actually kind of hard on it, <laughs> but it has held up very well. It's kept its shape. The material is super easy to wash up and really looks like the day we got it. So if you use the link down below or go to allform.com backslash minimal mom, you can save 20% on your all form sofa as well. Okay, mom, I think we have to get back to work. So what's so great about grouping like stuff with like stuff is we start to see how much we have. Like the painting bin is overflowing because we had so much stuff for painting. It was just all, all over the place. So we would just buy it again, right? And so same with like all the tubes of caulk. The reason I knew we needed a category for that was because Tom was like, oh, hey, we go run in the basement and see if we have some adhesive. And I'm like looking through them all. And I'm like, oh my goodness, we have 80, five of these right and they're kind of expensive so if they're all in one place it's very easy to see what we have and to go look there first obviously before we go and buy it again i'm also still coming across some just like really random things and so like i said i could just create a bin of random stuff but there's not that much um so i think what i'm going to do is actually ask tom because i kind of just have a feeling this stuff doesn't need to be kept anymore so i'm just going to make a little pile here and then ask him real quick what it is, like if these can be kept. So we have this shelf just about cleared off. So I think I'm gonna start moving some bins onto it and then we'll keep going, but we're making great progress. This feels really good. All right, let's look at this top shelf for a second. I'm seeing there's a ceiling fan up here it's such a bummer. We had it put this in when we first moved in, in the dining room and then realized it was just way too big for that space. And then eventually Tom put in recess lighting, which we love and don't actually even miss the ceiling fan. But we had spent over a hundred dollars on this beautiful ceiling fan. And so at the time it felt very wrong just to get rid of it. But what happens? It just comes down here, sits in storage and no one is making use of it. So I'm going to get all the pieces together, put it in a box and donate it because it's still like brand new. And once it's gone, that's actually gonna clear out a ton of space up here. Okay, so I'm really happy with the progress we've made so far, but I think it's also important to know our limits. So about 10 minutes ago, I was feeling really energized and like, wow, this is going so well, like I wanna keep going. And now I just realized I'm like starting to feel kind of tired and like, oh, this is getting hard. And so decision fatigue is real. <laughs> and so if you kind of get to a point where, where it's just feeling miserable, um, it's probably a good idea to take a break and then come back again. But the great thing is we've re-familiarized ourselves with everything here. We've realized we have the skills to be able to deal with this. So it doesn't feel so intimidating to come back and tackle it again in a little bit. Okay, so back at it. Uh, I had a little coffee here <laughs> ready to go. Okay, so I wanna work on this shelf together now. I do have my bins here for my categories to sort into. So um, that helps me. I feel like I'm prepared to work on this. And then I thought we could just talk through, I've been putting, putting off this shelf um, because there just seems like there's random things I'm not gonna know what to do with. So I thought we could talk through some of this stuff together and, and I'll just show you like what I come up against and what my plan is for it. Okay, so one thing that I have learned to do, if I'm gonna bring something down to a storage space or our basement in a box, I write on the outside what is in it and I just have that side face forward. So that has helped as far as having like mystery boxes. But as I say that, guess what's right here? A box with nothing written on it. So um, this is pulls, like drawer pulls, um, extra ones from the kitchen. I do wanna keep these. And then these are more, oh, I did write it on this one. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, drawer pulls. So those are more of those. So I, um, I actually wanna combine these into one um, box. So I'm going to do that, but I won't waste our time right now. So like this, we actually have three of these and this is dried, um, like mortar thin set, not just like mud. Um, so 
This is not gonna come off and I know we have two more that I've already come across, so I'm just gonna throw this away. Um, and then we have an extra container. I'm gonna set aside to see if we need it to organize and if not, um, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I don't like having extra um, empty containers around because then they just fill back up with stuff. This is what I was worried about. We got this to do, um, to like seal our ducks. We thought it was always warm in the basement and not upstairs. We thought if we could seal them off better, but then Tom found a different solution. So we have had these, they haven't been opened. And so our home improvement store, you can return stuff um, for store credit without the receipt. Even though it's been a while, we've returned stuff after a couple years. Um, and then I also had found a bag of plumbing fixtures. And so we're gonna return those as well because um, both Tom and I have realized if we just try to like keep this on hand for like another time, even like the plumbing stuff, he always, every time he has a project, he just goes to the store and gets the stuff he needs for that specific project. So there's no sense in trying to store it. And so I'm just gonna return this and not have to deal with it anymore. And similarly was um, this soffit vent. I don't remember what wasn't right about it, but it wasn't right. So I'm just gonna dust off this box and return this as well. So that's gonna go. This was like extra tile from our bathroom. We don't even have this tile in there anymore. So I'm gonna throw this away. And then here's like another bag of stuff from our home improvement store. Flex seal tape, I'm gonna, this is gonna get returned as well. So again, I'm not even gonna try and keep this stuff. If it is unopened and we're not using it, it is going back to the store. Even if we would take a little bit of loss from not having a receipt, we just forget about it. Like we can't remember everything that's here. So more tile that can get thrown away. This, this is the worst. This is like a little random bin of stuff. Um, and so I'm not, I don't feel qualified to go through this. So I'm gonna put it in the tool bin for now. And it is what it is. Empty bag. <laughs> um, some kind of LED light. I'm assuming we were testing it out to see if we wanted it upstairs. That's gonna go back to the store. And a window insulation kit. We have new windows now, so it's fun. We don't have to use this. So this box is a little beat up. I think I'll just donate this because I don't know that they would take this back to the store, but we don't need that. And, oh, I thought, I'm like light bulbs. I have a bin for light bulbs. Nope, empty light bulb box. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, and then, this, um, I'm in a, this can go back as well. Wow, this like whole shelf was like all returns and I was like so scared of it. Oh man, all right. Tools and, oh, this case got opened upside down. I'm gonna flip that open or flip it over and get everything put back into it. And then that's gonna go on the lower shelf. And then we are pretty much done. This is just a couple pieces of our old flooring. So I'm just gonna let that go too. We don't have time to manage that kind of stuff. All right. Wow, I feel really good. That actually wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. Okay, I still have a little bit to deal with on this bottom shelf, but I feel like I need to see some progress. So I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down, cleaning off the shelves and putting bins in place. And I just feel like I need that win right now. And then that's gonna give me the motivation to keep going. <laughs> so here we go. On this shelf, I had actually, this was a bin I had created for electrical stuff, but then it got other stuff piled into it. And so what I'm gonna do is give it a, well, I don't know, it looks like there's garbage in it too. I'm gonna make this the plumbing bin because I have an electrical bin, so I'm gonna sort out anything electrical into the electrical bin. Up here. Um, so, Anything electrical will go in here. Anything plumbing can stay in here. And then I'm also recognizing there's a lot of boxes of like nails and screws. And so I had been putting them in the tools bin, but I think I'm gonna make a separate bin for this kind of stuff. So this is just, you know, it's just kind of like what we learn as we go now. Like I started out with rough categories of what I thought we would need. And now I'm adjusting the categories as we go based on what we actually have, and that's totally fine, right? So I'm gonna set these aside and make a separate bin for those. And then like I said, anything, ugh, yeah, anything plumbing can actually stay in here. So, oh, 
mystery bags of stuff. <laughs> That's the worst, isn't it? All right, so these are all plumbing fittings, but can we even have a receipt? I'm gonna ask Tom if we can just return these or if he wants them to stay in the plumbing bin. I don't know if they're like standard or not. Okay, so I have it all sorted out now, so now I'm just gonna work on getting everything back into place. All right, I decided I wanted a matching bin for the plumbing and stuff. You don't have to have nice bins for this, right? I, I don't know, I feel like we've gotten to the point, I kind of talked about this when we did the other part of the basement where um, now I want everything to look nice and match and all that, but we're like eight years in, <laughs> right? And I'm, I feel a lot more confident about my organizing and decluttering and that we'll be able to maintain this and everything. I mean, I started out using diaper boxes in the beginning for my organizing, so, and it worked just fine and it was free, <laughs> so. And I do, I really like these um, clip-on chalk labels. I think I'm gonna be one short though, which is kind of a bummer. All right, so we got the top two shelves done. Let's keep working our way down and we're just about done, which feels really good. One hour, 48 minutes, isn't that remarkable? Um, so we were keeping track of how long it would take, and that's how long it took to get from here to here. And now what we're trying to decide is, should we go all the way and paint the floor? What's your vote? Paint the floor. <laughs> Corbin likes things to be done all the way, yeah. right? And to look really good. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we're gonna paint the floor and then we'll also show you everything piled up that we are donating, tossing, and returning um, because that made a huge difference in being able to get this space simplified. So. I have to run to the store and get some more paint then. So we'll grab some paint and we'll show you everything that we're getting rid of. And so again, going through the lens of decluttering or organizing someone else's space, something we can do to give them peace of mind is say, I'm not gonna get rid of anything. I will pile it up to, off to the side. And, and so if you wanna go through it or look through it or make sure I'm not getting anything rid of anything you would want, it's all here. So here are our garbage bags. Um, the, these are the bags of stuff and things we're gonna return. This is to donate. Um, this is like the extra trim and stuff that I think we can get rid of some other garbage stuff over there. So it doesn't look like much. In person, it feels like a lot more, <laughs> but um, that I couldn't believe how much just garbage there was. Empty packaging, um, scraps from remodeling projects. And so just even getting that out, can you see this bag is like, ugh, it is full. <laughs> so I know we have another one started. So. Um, just getting rid of that kind of stuff, it's amazing how much extra space that it created. I've also cut my hair since this video <laughs> began. Uh, like personally cut it, don't tell Diana, it drives her nuts when I do <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, Adeline was helping me like make sure the back was even and she's like, oh, I'm nervous. And I'm like, Adeline, I honestly really don't care. Like worst case, I go get a real haircut. So anyways, some of you will notice, many will not. I'm in the camp that would not notice, but for those who have noticed. All right, so this is the paint um, that we use on the floor. I used it on the other part of the basement. I had a great experience <laughs> with it. So it is a concrete and garage floor paint, um, like an epoxy. And I've been really impressed because our basement does get wet. There are areas that have gotten wet that were painted and it has held up really great. And then we decided to paint the surround around the sump pump as well. And so it's just amazing how a coat of paint just cleans everything up and it looks so nice, doesn't it? So we will have Tom come down and we'll show him and get his reaction as well. But I just wanna to mention too, I know we're kind of talking about like, you know, decluttering other people's stuff and organizing it and all that. And I know um, I had a really great conversation in our mentorship group last week that it, it can be really defeating when we live with people that aren't supportive of our decluttering efforts and you know potentially are even the opposite and criticize what we do and i've just heard from so many recently that it just makes it so hard and so i don't know that i have a lot of great solutions for that other than to say i'm sorry and i wish that um it were easier <laughs> because like that's just really hard when you when you've decided the value, like you believe it'll benefit you and your family, um, and it just feels like you're being criticized or put down for what you're trying to do. And so I'm sorry, that really stinks. And um, I know you're definitely not alone. And even a video like this can bring up thoughts of like, 
well, I wish my, you know, so-and-so would let me touch their stuff, right? Even, I just wanna help, even just to organize it, right? In a really crude way. <laughs> so anyways, I'm sorry if that's the boat you're in and ugh, I just, I do know that it can be really difficult. So I'm sorry for that. Okay, um, let's see. I think we're ready to get this all put back together and look at the, the final before and afters. That's the best part, isn't it? So uh, why don't we grab Tom? We will invite him down to check it out. And uh, yeah, and we'll take a look at it. Do you feel at all worried when you're looking at the, um, that shelf right now? It's very cute. <laughs> but a bin that says tools doesn't help me know what's in it. So here's the deal. I did macro categories. Macro categories? Yeah, big categories. And from uh, there, if you want to, like if you look at the middle shelf, the far right, at least you know every fastener you have is in there now. Well, every, every fastener in the house is in there. Yeah, or the one with like the caulk and silicone on the upper, right? So the other thing I did was we kept, Corbin and I hey, kept- my hammer. <laughs> oh. What? We kept everything that we were either gonna return to the store, donate, or throw away. So you can glance through it too to see if there's anything that you wanna keep. Okay. Can I, is there an option where I just say pass? And you can decide what? Yeah, no, if you trust me. <laughs> totally. And then Corbin actually wanted to, the fridge was next to the shelf. He wanted to move it over um, on the other side of the sump pump. Okay. box so it looked nicer in here so he moved that over there oh. too so that fridge is it's unplugged we don't use it but our thought is to put it in Tom's shop when it gets finished so it's just been hanging out down here so overall <laughs> what do you think I think it looks nice <laughs> thanks sorry I, I don't really care <laughs> like one bit well but. I care it was always a big it would be like if you just here. said oh what do you think of the new things I put on the open shelves I don't really care. But now, <laughs> you don't have to do anything with this. Doesn't that feel good at least? Yeah. <laughs> you weren't planning on doing anything I'm with still it. So I wasn't planning on doing anything with it. All right, fine. All right. Sorry, you win. Good you job, can... Tom. This looks beautiful. It's amazing. You're a wonder worker. <laughs> Whatever. All right, get out of here. I'll finish visiting with my friends who appreciate the hard work that I did. All right, thank you. Bye. So... Ultimately, it would have been nice if he had gushed and said how awesome it looks and how proud of me he is and he appreciates how much time I spent on this and all of that. Yes, <laughs> that, that would have been nice, right? But um, really, I was doing this for myself. It, it really bugged me when I came down here. I had been leaving it because it really wasn't my stuff. And so this feels so much better, even if I'm not being showered with appreciation, <laughs> right? So, um, so I'm really glad that I did it. And actually now Corbin and I were just talking that I think we're gonna try and tackle this last corner of our basement where the treadmill and the sandbox is and um, get the floor painted in there while we have it all out and everything. I think we have enough paint to do it. So I think we're kind of on a roll and we're gonna tackle that as well. And it's gonna feel so nice to have this space um, just kind of complete and look so much better. So I don't know if I, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm glad it's done. Um, I hope everyone in your household is super supportive of your efforts and appreciative. And if not, just know that I, I think you're doing an awesome job. I'm proud of you. I know it's not always easy, um, especially if the environment is not always conducive with decluttering or maintaining it. But um, keep going because it is so worthwhile. So I'll, I'll link to that video where we did the other section of our basement. And that was going through more of my own stuff and deciding how much to keep we don't use hardly anything we keep in storage. So we really have to lower that inventory. So that video might be helpful. So I'll link to that down below as well. But otherwise, I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.